Good morning, everyone. It's Monday. It's Monday Morning Mojo. I'm Anna Gibbs. You are the amazing you, and we're going to have a great conversation today about leadership. It's really, I think, an important conversation for all of us to have because we are all leaders, regardless of your title, regardless of what you might do for a living, regardless of who you work with. And I think that when we understand what leadership is and what it's not, and we really embrace the opportunity, our entire world can change. And would you agree that right now the world needs more great leaders? Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be, I think, a conversation where you're going to want to take some notes. Uh, I'm a big note taker, so I encourage you to do that. Um, because you, you may want to go back and revisit this a little bit and really take a look at who you are as an influencer, because that is what leadership is. John Maxwell says that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Leadership is influence. And so our ability to impact our own lives is just as important as our ability to impact other people. And so Greg Rochelle is a pastor of Life Church. He's an author. He has a great podcast on leadership. And we, you know, we're just looking at some of his material. And one of the things that he shared, which I thought was really important is, is this concept of leading yourself. And so before we can really get into our development of leadership and how we impact the lives of others, we have to take a look at how we're leading ourselves. And, and what that really looks like, right? So great leadership starts with self-leadership. So what do we mean by self-leadership? Well, it means that we are probably very in touch with who we are and who we're not, right? We are aware of our strengths and we work in our strength zone. But there's also a real, a real perspective about the habits and the mindsets of being a great leader. So let's dive in. So self-leadership is a really important topic because it means that you're in tune with yourself, but more importantly, listening to yourself. So just jot that down, listening to myself and really being responsible for how I lead my life, right? How I lead my life. And so we can look at what we do for a living. We can look at our relationships and we can look at the things we like to get involved in socially as well as civically and ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? So if I gave you a, a moment right now, just take some personal inventory, ask yourself, why do you do what you do? Why do you choose the career that you have? Why do you pursue some of the goals that you have? Why are you involved in certain organizations? What is it about that organization that attracts you? What is it about the work that you do that fulfills you? What is it that you want to give back? Because being a great leader means that you're coming from contribution as well. And so when you see yourself as a leader, do you automatically see yourself as someone who can contribute greatly to the world around them? You all agree the world needs more leaders, right? We need more leaders. So does it start with you? And how can it start with you? So just jot that down. How can I start with myself? and become a better leader, one that the world is really waiting for. The most effective leaders are transformational leaders. The most effective leaders are those people that really inspire change in others and create this wave of change with new thoughts, new ideas, and new actions. And so does that start with you? Right. So here are a couple of keys that Craig discussed in his podcast on leading yourself that I want to share with you. He said that there are two keys to leading yourself as you really pursue your leadership journey. And the first one is to develop a leadership identity. Now, this may be something you've never, ever considered before, but think about it. If you could really get clear about who you are as a leader do you have then an opportunity to develop that even further? Do you have an opportunity to really make an impact in the world on a higher level, right? Because leadership is not a title or a position. It is a mindset. Leadership is a mindset. 
And so if, if leadership is not something you do, but rather a leader is who you are, are you clear about that? Are you clear about your, your identity in this world as a leader? Are you clear about your strengths? Are you clear about your passion and your purpose? Are you clear about the things that really inspire you to take action? And are you clear about the remarkable, amazing person that you are? Or are you still wrestling with those thoughts that tell you you're less than in some way, right? So as you really get clear about your leadership identity, it will develop your self-confidence. It will enable you to stand taller and really speak clear with confidence in a group and lead in certain ways, right? And so this is important because as you really develop this identity, it becomes clearer and more meaningful to you to raise your hand and use your influence in positive ways because the world is waiting for you and needs you. You start to think differently. You start to think at a higher level. You start to project more into the future and create goals and visions, right? And really thinking not only about what you want to do today or this week, but what do you want to accomplish next year? Where do you want to be a year from now? Where do you want to be three or five years from now? Your life can dramatically change in three to five years. You could be in a completely different place mentally, even physically, financially, right? But it starts with your vision and your vision starts with your self-awareness and your self-confidence about who you are, about what you are here to contribute to the world. Because, you know, we can go through the motions and we can just go through our days and we can work for a living at a J-O-B, get a paycheck, retire at a certain age. And, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. Yet we can also live life out loud in a bigger way. We can have more rewarding experiences. We can touch more lives. We can create more influence. We can create more positive change, but it all starts with the way we see ourselves. So write that down. It all starts with the way I see myself. Because remember, leadership is not something you do. It is who you are. Leadership is who you are. So the second thing that Craig discussed is define your leadership initiatives. Define your leadership initiatives. And so what does that mean? Well, what is it that you'd like to do as a leader, right? Be honest with yourself about the things you enjoy, the things that you don't enjoy. And remember that this is your life and that you should be living your life in alignment with what your values are, with what your vision for your life is, not someone else's. Not someone else's. I feel like I'm speaking to someone out there. I am getting this energy back that this is like, oh my gosh, I think I need to hear this today. So as you develop your leadership initiative, it is about understanding really more about how to lead yourself, right? How to understand where your skills can be developed further and where they can be used. Because there's nothing worse than feeling like you're being underutilized, right? And so I said this on a mojo a couple of weeks ago, and I got this great message from someone who said that, that that really blew their mind. And what I said is, you are not a tree. You can move at any time. If there is anything going on in your life that is not a right fit for you, then figure out how to make it better or change it. You, you have the ability to change at any given moment, and it just starts right up in here. And so if there's anything out of alignment for you right now, ask yourself, why am I tolerating it? What can I do differently? And maybe it starts with having, you know, a conversation with someone who can help you create a game plan. But the opportunity for you is wide and vast to make changes that suit you and your values and give you the ability to work in your strength zone. And when you do that, you give permission to everyone around you to do the same. Right. So you start to create that ripple effect because leadership is not a title. It's who you are. And so when you can start to lead yourself, you'll have greater impact on other people that you might want to lead. Right. You can't lead other people effectively to success if you can't lead yourself first. So in looking at this and creating your leadership initiative, 
I think the first step is honesty, right? We have to be honest about where we are and where we want to be. And we have to be honest about what has to happen to get us to the next level, right? We have to look at how to bridge the gap, right? So honesty is really key. Now, honesty means that we're going to take a critical look, but we're also going to be kind to ourselves in the process. We're not going to take a look and start berating ourselves and putting us down because that isn't going to help us build our confidence. And it's not going to help us build our self-awareness, right? So we, we want to take an honest look and say, you know what? The good news is I see it. And this is where I'm going to develop and, and move forward. And, you know, it's interesting because there's an opportunity to hear some feedback at times, right? But then when you realize it's someone's opinion or judgment of you, right? That is not feedback. And that is not what we're looking for. We have to be clear about who we are, right? And we have to know who we are and really be confident in that. And it starts with that self-awareness and, and self-talk. And what other people think of you is none of your business. We say that a lot here on Mojo, right? Dr. Wayne Dyer, what other people think of you is none of your business. Now, if there is something constructive in someone's observation that you can look at critically and say, you know, maybe I do need to look at this because sometimes we have blind spots, right? But when it comes to someone judging or having an opinion of who you should be in the world and you try to meet the demands of that, you lose sense of your own identity. And, you know, the thing about it is until you do the work on yourself to know more of your own identity, right? Not only as a leader, as we're talking about today, but your true identity, who you are, you are all made to be this amazing, wonderful human being. Like it's such a gift to be a human. I mean, you could have been born an ant and that's not an easy life, an ant right? And get stepped on and you're done. You're done. Now we feel like at times we can get stepped on in life here too, but as humans, we have the ability to think our way out of anything. You can think your way out of anything. You can think your way into something too, right? And so your mindset is 99% of everything that will lead you to success in this world. It's about your mindset and, and the way you think is the way you show up in this world. And so it has to start with our own thoughts and it has to start with how we identify with who we are and how we love who we are and how we acknowledge things that we might wanna grow and develop, which is great because if we're not growing, we're dying. And who we wanna be, the, the purpose that we may have, right? Because the purpose of life is to become the best version of yourself. Really, everyone's searching for the purpose of life and the meaning of life. And it's just very simple. Now, you can take this general statement and then drill it down to specific things for you. But I believe the purpose of life is just to become the best version of yourself. So in order to become the best version of yourself, you have to know where you start, right? What's your foundation? What's your start line, right? So that means you have to get clear about who you are and really then take it from there, right? But that's what I believe is the purpose of life is to become the best version of yourself, which means that we have to be comfortable with growth and we have to be comfortable moving forward. And I think a great question to ask yourself every morning, if you are looking to develop your own personal leadership is this question, what difference can I make today? Now, if you want to get more specific, you could, you know, look at what you do, right? Your role or your career and say, you know, what difference can I make in my staff today? What difference can I make with fill in the blank of someone's name? What difference can I make with X project, whatever. But I mean, at the end of the day, what difference can you make today? Can you touch a life today? Can you ask a question, share something that gets someone thinking can you create opportunity through the projects and work that you do? Like, what is the difference that you can make today? Because the world needs more transformational leaders. And so transformation is change. And so if you're looking to make a difference, then that would say to you that you're looking to change something. We didn't ask ourselves, what can we do to keep everything the same? We're asking ourselves, what can I do to make a difference today? right? So what's in the difference? So a couple more thoughts for you this morning. Um, what is a leader? 
I think a leader has influence, as we said. Uh, a leader is a teacher. Whether it's direct or indirect, a leader is someone who teaches other people how to think. And then that individual, when their thinking changes, the results that they're getting changes, right? So when you're managing, you're looking to, and I use the word manipulate in a positive way, but as a manager, you're looking to manipulate a situation, right? You're looking to insert the direction and the control of how things are happening. But leaders work through people. And so leaders are there to help people think differently so that those people then can act differently. And that's what creates change. So it is really more of that ripple effect. And I think that when you help someone to think differently, you really change their life, right? Because now as they think differently, they can apply those new thoughts in every area of your life. They're going to see things change in their life and you may never know about it. You may never ever see or know or get that feedback of how your influence started to affect every area of their life and who those people were that they then affected because of that, right? That's the amazing thing about leadership, okay? Now, with leadership, it's not just about talent. We talk about talent a lot in the business world, right? And, and John Maxwell quote him again. He says, talent is never enough. He wrote a book on it. It's actually really very good. Because we can have the talent, we can have skill sets and experience, and yet if we don't have the behavior, if we're not in alignment with the behavior that allows us to put that out into the world, talent may never be enough. If we don't have the ability to connect and relate to people, they may never follow you, right? So if you are a leader and you have no one following you, you're really not a leader, you're all alone. You're taking a walk, as John would say, right? So talent may not be enough. It's really about the characteristics of what makes a great leader, right? And it all starts with what the way we think. So your leadership ability will determine your own level of success in any area of your life. And so I, I wanted to have this conversation because there are goals that you have. There are dreams that you have. We're working on a lot of things, and yet, are we looking to grow ourselves so that we can become the person we need to be in order to execute on those goals and dreams? If anyone is feeling stuck, if anyone is feeling like they're kind of, you know, struggling with the clarity they need to see what's next, then it might start with taking a look within. And so, you know, being a transformational leader starts with yourself. And it starts with how you are not only leading yourself, but what change are you orchestrating in your own life? Are you motivated and are you programmed for change? Are you intentional about growth and looking to become someone different in the years to come? And that doesn't mean you sell yourself out and you change anything about your core values. I'm just saying that you become someone who from the outside, their life looks unrecognizable, right? Because everything about you starts to grow and you start to impact the lives of other people and they're growing around you too, right? So we all have this unlimited ability to do that. The discipline is the secret glue, really, to what connects your thoughts and your goals to your actions but it's really what brings the results. So blind spots, we all have them, right? Have you ever been driving in your car and all of a sudden you're startled by that other car on your left that you didn't see? It was in your blind spot. The car was still there though. Just, just because you didn't see it doesn't mean it wasn't there. And so that happens to us all the time. And uh, that's one of the things that a coach, right? When you work with a coach can help you to identify a blind spot. You might be behaving in such a way because our behavior is habitual. Everything we do is based on habits. So our behavior can be so habitual that we've lost sight of the impact of it. Or we might be doing something on autopilot and, and so not even aware of it. So it becomes a blind spot because what you can't see or what you don't acknowledge cannot be fixed, right? So in your pursuit of personal growth and development, you have to, you know, be honest, but you have to see it too. You have to be aware of it. 
And so if something is, is really in a blind spot, then you can't fix it. And that's why it's, it's in that blind spot because you're just not aware of it. So someone else's perception, like through coaching and asking you some powerful questions can help you identify things that are in your blind spot. And so if something is not in your sight or awareness, can it prohibit you being in your authentic self? It could, depending on what it is, right? Depending on what we're talking about. And I think using the term authentic self is so important, right? Because it ties in what I said a little while ago about the purpose of life is to become the best version of yourself, right? Well, you have to kind of get clear first about what, well, who am I authentically? And can I be comfortable with who I am authentically? And can I be comfortable with not needing everyone's approval, right? So back in, I think, 2020, maybe, I did a um, mojo session. You can find it on my YouTube channel on I'm not everyone's cup of tea, and I'm okay with that. And that's basically what we were talking about that morning is that, you know, you may not be everyone's cup of tea, and that's fine. It's okay, right? But who are you authentically? What are the beautiful, wonderful gifts that you're willing and, and able to give to the world? And that you shouldn't play small to make someone else feel more comfortable or for their acceptance. Don't play small for someone else's approval. You know, don't transform or morph yourself to the point that you forget exactly who you really are. Right. So that's really important here, too. So I'm going to wrap this up and just want to give you a few thoughts around the traits that every leader should have. Basically, the traits every leader should have. Number one is self-discipline. So those are some words we used already today, self-discipline, which means that, you know, you are probably someone who is very time blocked. You understand where your priorities are. You are focused on what the right habits need to be. Sure, you could talk about work ethic and all of that. Um, but it's about sustainable behavior. It's about being, when, when we talk about self-discipline, it means that we're focused on sustaining the behavior that brings results at the end of the day in any area of our life. Uh, number uh, two is they prioritize and work towards goals, right? So again, they, a, a leader knows that 80-20 rule, right? They know where their priorities are. They stay focused on those things first. They don't allow time wasters to get in their way and they, keep their priorities in front of them because they're constantly examining them, right? So yeah, stuff happens, right? Things come in front of us that our priority could change, right? And so as a leader, we make that determination quickly and we adjust. So we're always examining. So we're talking about traits every leader should have. They have the ability to lead other people, right? Like I said, you have influence over people. You're not a follower, you're a leader, but here's the thing about leaders. They're also students as much as they are teachers. Powerful leaders are always learning as much as they might be teaching and sharing. That's another trait of a leader. And leaders invest time into people. Leaders invest their time into people. Now, what that means, there's a difference between investing your time with people and just spending time with people. Right. And I love people. I'm a people person. Yet I'm learning more and more how to protect my time. And as much as I want to help everyone around me and talk to everyone around me, I know that if I do that, if I spread myself too thin, I can't be effective. So I'm learning more and more how to protect my time, how to limit those conversations and people I allow into my day because then I can actually be of higher service. Does that make sense? So examine that in your own life. Leaders are trustworthy. If you don't trust a leader, will you follow them? Leaders are trustworthy. So you have to ask yourself about that. How do you build trust with the people around you? How do you show up as someone who's competent? Can people look at you and say, you can help me? People want your help, right? And so leaders are trustworthy. People will tolerate mistakes that leaders can make a mistake, but they have to be honest about it, right? They have to own it and they have to show that they're willing to get back on track, right? It's okay to be vulnerable as a leader. So I want to make this clear too. Leaders are not superheroes. They're not perfect people, but they are willing to 
lead at a high level with integrity. They're willing to take risks. They're willing to put themselves out there. They're willing to develop other leaders. And if something doesn't go wrong, they'll be the first one to take responsibility. A true leader will be the first one to say, time out. Let me look at what just went on here. Is my DNA on this? What could I have done differently? Right? And so is that the type of leader you want to follow? Leaders who inspire you to be the same person who can take responsibility and ownership. And the other thing is that leaders have vision. Leaders have vision, not only for themselves, but for the people they lead, or I should say not only for the people they lead, but for themselves, right? Whichever one comes first. So leaders cast a vision. They work towards a vision constantly, constantly. They're always looking up and looking ahead. And so you have to ask yourself, am I doing that in my own life? Am I always looking forward? Am I always thinking about how you know, I can move into a new area of, of performance, productivity for myself, for my organization. And the thing about the vision of a powerful leader, it comes from within. It comes from within. They actually see it in their mind. They see it in their mind and they're able to articulate the vision to other people. They're able to articulate the vision to other people because that's what creates the influence for others to join you on the journey. So again, the true measure of leadership is influence. And it has to start with personal leadership. If you hope to lead others, you have to be able to lead yourself at a high level first. All right, everyone, have a great day. This was awesome. I will see you back here next Monday. Bye-bye.